In this video, we're going to take a look at the difference between properties defined on the object's prototype and those, uh, those properties that are defined on the object itself. So to take a look at this, we're going to create a new object called Base Widget. And Base Widget is going to have several properties on it. We're going to have one called Length, and we'll set it equal to 12. And then we're going to have one called Width, and we're going to set it equal to 24. Then using this Base Widget, as a prototype, we're going to create a, another object called widget, and we're going to use the object.create function, and we're going to pass in the base widget object to serve as the prototype. And then we're going to specify a couple of additional properties on here. So we're going to create a property called color, and we're going to give it a value of blue. We're also going to make it writable so that it can be modified. And we're going to make it enumerable so we can actually enumerate over the properties of the object and it will appear in the list. So we'll make that true. And then we want to create a second property called quantity. And so we'll just say quantity, QTY, and we'll set the value to 5 just like that. We can remove this last comma on the end. So now we have our base widget and our widget object. So now what I want to do is I actually want to iterate over the properties of the widget object. Say for, for var prop in widget. And then we'll just simply output the name of the property and its value to the console. So we'll say prop plus widget Hop. and we'll save this and we'll go to our web browser and we'll reload our page and we'll see that we have four properties listed color, quantity, length, and width. Now you'll notice all four properties appeared regardless of whether they were defined on the prototype such as length and width or they were defined on the object itself like color and quantity. If I wanted to limit the list to just the properties defined on the widget object itself I could do the following. I can say if widget has own property and then pass in the name of the property, then I will output to the console log the name of the property and the value. So now I'll come back to my web browser and I'll reload my page. And now you see I have just the color and just the quantity. Okay, now if I wanted the ability to just pull out the properties that were defined on the prototype, I could do this. I could say var widget proto and then do object.get proto type of and then pass in widget just like this. And then basically I can copy my loop up here. And I'll simply pass in widget proto, just like that, and then use widget proto here, as well as use widget proto here. And now I can save that. And to uh, keep it simple, we'll just comment out this code up here. I can save that, and now I'll reload and we'll see that we're going to see length and width. So we have the ability using the has own property function to check whether or not a property is defined on an object and then if we want to get the properties for a for the prototype of the object we can use the object.get prototype of to get a proto, to get the prototype object of that particular object and then iterate over its properties. The final thing that we can do And finally, we have one additional way in which we can actually get the property names um, defined on a specific object, not the ones defined on its prototype. We can use the object.getOwnPropertyNames function, pass in our widget, just like this. And we can just call for each function, and then we'll have our property. And then we can come in here and do a simple console.log property plus colon plus widget 
property just like that. We can save that and then we can go to our web browser and we can reload our page and we'll see now we just get color and quantity. So we have many options for getting the property names defined specifically on an object to differentiate them from the ones that are defined on the prototype of the object.